Hello, this is a demonstration of how to use the resources in an Android project and to get the resources by their name as opposed to getting them by their resource number, which is the usual way of accessing a resource. So I've created a new project here named resource by name and we can see here under the resource folder I don't have much inside of any of my drawable directories. So what I want to do is I want to put a button on the screen well, let's do that now, actually. I want a button on the screen. Let's put it right up here in the middle. Getting rid of that text. So we'll line that up to the middle. And what I want to do is when I click this button, I want it to change the image. So I'm going to set this here to be a button, btn, next image. And I want to change this text to instead of being button, I'll call it next, say next image. And then what we want to do is we want to change an image. So I'm going to go to images and put an image view, right, let's center it right in the middle of the screen. And I can choose what image I want. I don't have anything loaded at the moment, so let's set the launcher just for fun, and I'll fix that in a minute. Now I need to be able to, what I want to do is I want to click this button and cycle through a group of images. So to do that, I need to import the images. I'm going to put them into the HDPI folder. This is a, a reasonable default. Another reasonable might be the MDPI for the middle default uh, DPI, uh, unless you want to create individual DPI uh, images. So I happen to here have here six dice images, blue underscore one dot jpg through blue underscore six dot jpg. I'm going to drag and drop them into my high DPI folder, copying them in so that an actual copy of the file is created. Okay, so now I've got them in my file. If I were to simply run this, let's try it. Of course, we're not going to have anything particularly spectacular go on, other than we can prove that we at least have got off the ground. We have the resources in the project. It compiles correctly, and it shows my activity with the button, as well as the image view. Of course, no functionality, but that's what we're here for to add. Click it, nothing happens. Okay, so let's go back here. First I'm going to get rid of this icon. I don't really want to show that icon, so I can select here under Source. It allows me to pick one. Let's start with the 1. And so now I got the 1 die there. Now when I click the image, next image, I want this to increment to the next image all the way through. So let's go and make that happen. So I'm going to edit my Java file for the actual brains of the operation. As usual, getting rid of the uh, unneeded code. So, I want to set up that button. So I'm going to create a method called setup next image button. I want to keep it all nice and modular. Control 1 to bring up the autocomplete, and I will now code that up. So we've got this button. What we want to do is we want to set the on click listener for it. So I've got to find the button. It's going to be a image button. I'll just call it btn equals cast it. And it's going to be find view by ID. And this is going to be r dot id dot button next image. So that's uh, what we need here. I'll go control one, import the button from the android.widget class or package. So now I've got the button. I can say button dot set on click listener. I want a new from the view dot on click listener. Control space, select that, and it creates an anonymous inner class. And in here I can put my code. So often we put toasts in here, but now I actually want to do something interesting. What I want to do is I want to change the image. So let's first change the image by its by a resource ID. So what I have to do is I have to find the image uh, view. So it's gonna be an image view that I want to work with. Let's call this yeah, sure, image view equals, I want to cast it, image view, and it's going to be find view by id, r dot id dot, and here we have, well I didn't give it a name, I should probably have given it a better name, so let's do that now. I'll comment out this line of code so it continues to build. Go back to my activity here, and this I want to rename instead of being image view, let's call this one uh, die image, for the image of my dice. I'll save the file, and that'll cause it to rebuild. Now when I come here, uncomment this line, I can control space, and here I have the die image 
image view at my disposal. It's going to complain because I haven't imported it yet. I'll complete the import. So now on the image view, I can call .set image. And we can see here I've got a number of options. The easy one to do if you know exactly what image you want to set to just once is to use its ID. So here I can set the ID, and it's going to be r.drawable, oops, dot, and then here's all the different images. So let's make it flip to the fourth one. So when I click the button, it's going to flip to the fourth uh, die image. Not quite what we want. We want to be able to click the button and have it go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, and so forth. So we're at least kind of progressing. We're moving co towards it. I'll run that with Control F11. It's not going to refresh. We're going to be able to click the button and move on. So let's see that. Oh, we have a problem. So let's go see what went wrong. We saw in the background here that my log cat popped up. We can trace this through to see what went wrong. So if I scroll all the way up, fatal exception in main, unable to start activity component information, resource by name, Lang, the widget class exception, activity thread dot Java, application thread, hmm. So we have to now figure out why this went wrong. We know that we got an, an exception here, unable to start activity. We want to look for the code that we wrote. So let's expand this out and then we can check out what actually happened. So this is all the Android stuff, Android, Android, Android. Down here we get into com, com example. Ah, so main activity line 21. So let's get go back here, see my code, line 21. It was unable to work with this. We can look at this and think, well, what happened? Why did this go wrong? Well, we're working with a button, not actually an image button. So that's my problem. It's the button that changes images, but it's not actually an image button class. I'll switch the import, and let's try that again. This is, if you cannot tell, a live demo. Although it is nice when something goes wrong in a demo, that way you can see how to fix it. So now when I click the button, we're expecting it to roll to number four. So it's on number one, and it now rolls to number four. Of course, I keep clicking it, nothing interesting happens. So let's go back, and let's see what we can do on that. I will give myself some more screen space. So what I want is I want to somehow track what image I'm on, and change that uh, the number as I go on the die. So I've got to have some way of tracking it. It's a class. We're in Java. Let's add a field. So I'm going to make it a private integer, and let's call it current die number. And we're going to start it off being 1. Makes sense. That's what we want to start from. Now every time I click the button, I'm just going to move on to the next one. So I'll put a comment in here, move to next die. Well, that's fine. I'm incrementing the number. I could display it. I could pop it up to the screen, but it's not actually going to do anything. I'm not doing anything with it. So instead of me drawing this, I need to somehow find out the ID or the resource ID for the current one I'm looking at. So what I can do is I'm going to create a. I'm going to go back up here. So if, uh, we come up, come up with the name of the file we want. So the first step is we want the file name. The second step is translate the file name to a resource ID. So what's the file name we want? Well, we want the name here to be blue underscore. We're going to concatenate in the number, so current die number. And then I'm going to concatenate in, I would normally concatenate in .jpg. However, it turns out that the resources I'm going to be working with 
are actually going to be talking in terms of uh, not needing this whole .jpg. We don't need the extension. Android is willing it, um, fills in a, whatever valid extension works for us. So now I'm just going to stick with the um, the starting point here of just saying blue underscore and then the number. Okay, so I've got the file name. How can I get an actual resource ID from that? Well, it turns out I can do this by using the get resources call inside of my activity. So I want an integer, so int call it ID. I'm going to set it to zero just for the moment. We're going to complete the code here. So instead of me using this ID, I'm going to use the new ID that I come up with. So that's what we want is somehow to figure out what ID this is going to be. So I'm going to say get resources. And then on the resources object, I'm going to get resource or sorry, get identifier, pardon me. Now what goes in here? Well we've got a string, a default a string for the default type, and the default package. So the string, i.e. what's the name of my identifier, is going to be file name, or the name of my resource is file name. The default type, which is where it should go looking for this, I want this to be under drawable. This is the type of resource I'm looking to get back. And then the package, I've got to give it a package on where to look. Well, the easy way to do that is to make it very generic. I can say this dot get package name. Uh, this dot get package name. And I may have to actually specify here, instead of this, because I'm inside of a subclass, I need to specify main activity dot this dot get package name. This one actually has a package because it's public, uh, it is uh, the high level class, it stands on its own. And then down here, we're just going to change the image based on the ID. So what's the process? Well, I come up with a new number for the die. I then figure out what the file name is going to be. That is going to correlate to here on the left, the actual image. I'm not using the file extension because I don't actually need one. And then I'm going to convert or resolve this name, the file name, into an actual identifier using the get resources dot get identifier. Using the drawable um, type of uh, resource and then the actual package. I can pass this identifier into my set image resource call down here. So let's try it. See how it works. Of course there's a few bugs here we can uh, walk through in a minute trying to figure them out, but the best way to find them is through testing. So it launches, we're expecting it to be a number one at startup, which it is. Click next image, number two, three, ah fantastic, we're able to walk through them. Now what happens when I click next? No, it's gone. Why? Well, it's trying to look for image seven. Blue underscore seven, it does not exist. So I'm going to actually make this here. I'm going to say current die number mod equal six. Well, in fact, we've got to make this a bit more complicated. I want this to be uh, let's do it this way. If current die number is greater than six, we're just going to set this back to one. Current die number equals one. You could do it with mod and add one. This logic happens to uh, be a little simpler, perhaps. I will correct the spelling, and now let's try that one last time. One, two, three, four, five, six, back to one. Fantastic. Now a hint to use sometimes if you want, you might want to extract this code into an update function. We've got a member or a field that's changing values. We may have other things that change as well. We want to perhaps make it into a simple update. So I'm going to go Control Shift or Alt Shift T and I can say extract method, which happens to be Alt Shift M refactoring. I'm going to name this update and I can specify where to, it goes to. I'm going to put it in the main activity. So let's call it update UI. So now we can see we've extracted it here. 
All this is going to do is call the function to, or write the code to advance the counter, and then update the UI. Update the UI reuses the rest of that code. It's kind of nice to have it this separated, because then if some other part of my program needs to somehow update the UI, maybe after the background changed, or after the value reset for some other button, I don't have to have duplicate code. And one last time, just to show that that didn't break it. So what have we seen in this? We saw how to import the images. We saw how to put the image on screen. And we've seen how to convert a name, a file name for a resource, into a number, which we can then resolve to an I is the ID. And we can use that to draw the image on screen. Thank you for watching.